So we want to complete finish our discussion of the black hole like solutions in general theory of relativity with the discussion of uh, another very complicated and uh, subject on which there is no uh, generally commonly accepted accepted opinion in the scientific community so let me phrase the problem that i want to address we obtain we have obtained the following penrose diagram describing the collapse process the following Penrose diagram, which describes the collapse process. Let me draw it clearly. So we have the following situation. So this is this is a region which is inside the star, in the body, the body of the star. So consider some observer which stays always outside of the star. Its world line is like this. So from the point of view of this observer, uh, the collapse is never ending. So the surface, uh, the, the last light ray, which is emitted or refracted by the star, goes along the horizon and reaches the observer only at its future infinity. The, we have seen this effect in many different situations in many different calculations that a body which is falling inside black hole it takes from the point of view of outside Schwarzschild observer it takes infinite time etc etc so these are different there are different ways to see this phenomenon so then appears a very obvious question well no uh, of course there is always event horizon uh, for, for the collapse process, there is an event horizon. This event horizon is present there always. But the question is whether the black hole, from the point of view, or the matter, the, the body of the black hole, the matter which uh, creates the black hole, uh, the point is if, from the point of view of the observer, which stays always outside of the black hole, uh, the question is whether this creation happens during finite period of time or not. You see that we observe the following situation, that basically uh, the matter which contributes to the black hole from the point of view of outside observer always eternally stays outside of the horizon. It never crosses this. So I want to establish a few things. First of all, I want to clearly state the approximation in which this statement is valid. And then I want to propose my, not generally accepted, opinion on what is going on. Uh, I want to uh, con uh, convince you that the creation of the black hole happens within finite time, even from the point of view of those who are staying eternally outside of the black hole. Why? The reason is the following. This statement, so suppose we have a, a star which is collapsing, and suppose we have, uh, it emits uh, some radiation, emits some radiation or refracts some radiation, refracts some radiation, which is detected by someone staying outside of the black hole. One may say why I address this question, because this uh, radiation experiences this exponential, exponential uh, redshift. The frequency experiences exponential redshift. So there will be no device which is capable to detect this phenomenon. But you see this exponential factor is crucial for many phenomena that are happening in the black hole. For example, this exponential factor is crucial for the, uh, for the Hawking radiation. So due to this exponential factor, we have the Hawking radiation. Of course, one may say that there is no device which can detect this, but the Hawking radiation is exactly due to this factor. So the, uh, I, I think that the discussion I'm conducting is important to understand deeper the Hawking radiation and the back reaction on it. So that's the reason I'm discussing this phenomenon. Again, uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, radiation which is refracted or emitted by the body of the star and detected by this guy. The fact that this radiation, uh, uh, how you call it, uh, if it is emitted in equal periods of time, is reached by observer, but the, the, time, the time is increased. So the periods, 
uh, these are periods becoming bigger while these are fixed. That can be seen from different ways of calculations and is related to the fact that uh, time is slows down as uh, fr from the point of view of this observer, every process on the star surface is slows down. And, uh, but this statement is obtained in the following approximation, in the approximation that light rays are going along light-like geodesics. Light rays are going along light-like geodesics if they describe a probe, if they describe uh, such a situation that we neglect the fact that that light ray carries energy and also curves space-time. So basically, this space-time describes the following situation, that it is curved by the black hole, but we neglect the fact that it is curved by the observer or by light rays. The question is whether this neglection is meaningful when we discuss such an exponentially suppressed phenomena. And I am trying to uh, explain to you that it is, in fact, important to take into account the fact that light rays are also bending, curving the space-time because they are, they are carrying energy. And if we take into account the fact that light rays also are contributing to the con curvature of the space-time, the process looks a bit different. Let me clarify this point on the picture that we have described in the lecture four, in that lecture where we have obtained for the first time Schwarzschild solution. In that lecture, we considered the, the uh, light-like geodesics, light-like geodesics in the uh, Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates. So there was a peculiar, so this is, let me tell, say that this is a singularity, R equals to zero, this is R equals to Rg. And then we had the following picture. We had outgoing light rays behaving like, the, like this. And inside, they were actually ingoing. And there were ingoing light rays like this. So that was the picture that we had already. Now, this picture describes geodesics, describes uh, light-like geodesics. Uh, and it neglects the fact that light rays carry energy and also curved space-time. Of course, if a light ray carries energy, if we take into account that it carries energy and also curves space-time, it goes along a curve which is actual light-like line, world line, rather than geodesic, which is for the small energy carried by light ray is a little bit different from this guy. So those will be a little bit different. Of course, this picture is not applicable anymore in that circumstances because uh, 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 in this case, the picture is stationary, so it repeats itself at every different moments of time. It's stationary. While if we take into account the, the fact that light rays also carry energy and curve space-time, the, the situation becomes non-stationary. But approximately for short periods of time, for short period of time, if we discuss only seeds of light rays, seeds of light rays, in that case, we, can, we have a very similar picture. Very similar picture, but light rays are a bit, actual light rays are a bit different from the geodesics, are a little bit different from the geodesics. But now what do we encounter? In the original picture for the geodesics, we had the following situation, that this vertical line, this vertical line, which corresponds to the horizon here, was also one of the light rays. So if a, if a light ray was standing on this line, it eternally stand on it, eternally go along it. But if we take into account the fact that light rays also carry energy and bend uh, curved space-time, the picture will be similar. We will also have a family of outgoing geodesics that are in this region are going to infinity, in this region are going inside. In the seeds, we will see that. For the seeds, this will be apparent. 
for the seeds will be apparent. But it will happen that this light ray will either belong to this family or to this family, but will not eternally stay on this surface due to the fact that it also bend, curves space-time. So it will contribute to the emission of gravitational waves or something, uh, some other stuff like that. So let me rephrase this, what I'm saying, in different terms. I'm saying the following thing, that if this guy emits uh, radiation which is received by uh, an observer which stays always outside the black hole, uh, uh, this observer will see the very la last tsug, uh, the very last um, wave packet emitted by, by the star, and the, the one which is after it will contribute to the body of the black hole, to the energy of the black hole, and will not be received by this observer. So this observer will stop receiving uh, uh, light rays from the collapsing body will stop receiving light rays from the collapsing, collapsing body within finite time me as measured by this outside observer. So this moment can be considered as a moment of the creation of the black hole. Of course, this definition that I have gave to you, this explanation that I have gave to you has some drawback because the moment of the creation of the black hole is uh, somehow related to the energy carried by this light ray stronger is the energy carried by each uh, wave packet, earlier the creation is happening. Uh, this is a drawback. And of course, I'm vaguely explaining to you the picture which demands some uh, further rigorous study and explanation. So uh, I just gave you the idea, my idea, of what is going on and why the creation of the black hole happens within finite period of time from the point of view of outside observers.